So there are 22 teams that have been invited to Orlando. We've been over this, but there's eight that are not. These teams include the Hawks, Hornets, Bulls, Cavs, Pistons, Warriors, Timberwolves, and the Knicks. And there, there's been a thing brought up like on ESPN and other shows. Is there an interest in seeing these teams play in like a little tournament themselves? Is there in like a little loser's bracket, I guess? Is there even a point to seeing these people play? Because I've been seeing some things that people want these teams, like they want to see these teams play. But honestly, in, given these times, even the, the cost that's going to take. And, there's, and it's meaningless games. You're not playing for anything. I doubt that these players even want to, but there's ultimately, ultimately no point in playing games. So yeah. I'm not even sure why it's a conversation, if I'm being honest. Well, it's kind of like, you know, some of the teams who want a better chance to get that number one overall pick, they rather see their team, you know, go out there, play and lose. Mm-hmm. You know, get get a better shot at the number one pick. Um, you know, some people just, you know, they're – Yeah, let's go out there fans. and do our best to lose, guys. Hell yeah. <laughs> but also some people, they're just our basketball fans, you know, and you hate to lose seeing a chance for seeing your team play or mm-hmm. your favorite players play, you know. Uh, there are some people like um, Vince Carter. He's not going to get another chance to play. Yeah. You know, he, he's calling it quits after 22 seasons. The I would, first guy to play four season. different decades. He's still on the N64. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, just seeing stuff like that, you know. And just, you know, there's always, no matter who's playing, there's always a chance for something crazy to happen in basketball. That's fair. So, you know, just, you know, I understand why people want it back. But from a Mm -hmm. business standpoint and from a career standpoint for most of these players, Mm -hmm. coming back is probably not the best idea. Because you come back in one of these games, because they're playing, what, like eight games that they probably get to. Yeah, it's like eight regular season games, something like that. What happens if one of their star players gets hurt, or, it's or bad. something happens and mm-hmm. someone wants to trade? So you Imagine know, if something, something happens, happens. To, to Steph Curry. Yeah, exactly. You don't you don't want to lose. It's those not people. worth the risk. It, it's not worth the risk. It really so, isn't. Uh, I mean, for all cool things, it would be to like see them play. I guess in losers bracket, there's ultimately not a big enough reason for them to play to justify this. Yeah, it, 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 it's it is what it is. Yeah, I, I kind of like, I could say, like, when the NHL came back with their plan, the Sharks were not a part of the playoff teams. And I was disappointed, of course, but at the same time, like, the Sharks, like, these eight teams that were listed, they, mm-hmm. there is almost no chance they were actually going to do something with it. So it's better just to be done with it, regroup, revamp, and maybe rebuild a little bit better and, and just come, like you said, Jalen, come back better next year. There's always, it's, it's, it's always it, next year. It's nice to play, but also you got to be a little realistic. Yeah, no, it's – my whole thing is, you know, I saw a couple of things um, about people against, you know, the, the people coming back to play. them. They, mm-hmm. A lot of people just said just in the season because they said no matter what, there's going to be an asterisk next to whoever wins the championship. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, – and I, I'm going to go off what Gianna said. Gianna's released a statement saying you, this is probably going to be the toughest championship to win of all time. And I 100% agree. Yeah, uh, I'm right there with him. I, uh, uh, it was an interesting point to make, mm-hmm. but it's definitely one that now I've, I've heard. I'm on, I'm on board with, with that train of thought. Yeah, it's you have to think about it. You, you kind of have to listen to this perspective. All these players, usually during the season, you see a lot of these players sit out a couple of games, you know, injuries, stuff like that. Unless all these players LeBron have been resting. Half the season. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But all Sorry, these players load management. They're not sitting management. out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all these players have been sitting out uh, uh, for months now, training, getting better, working on their shot, working on the stuff that they already knew this season they struggled with. So it's pretty much like a quick off season turnaround. Mm-hmm. You know, you know that that beginning of the season heat that people bring. You know, when they're kind of just going off because all that work they put in the off season. Now you guys just pretty much went through a season, gave these p- players enough time to study what they were doing wrong and, and, and fix it, work on that, work on their shot, work on their jumper, free those, get those down. You know, now these guys are hungry. It, it, those bubble teams who are fighting for that eighth seed, hungry. They, they know that, that this is their last shot. Eight games to go all out to get a, a playoff spot. You, these guys are, are going to go balls to the wall to get that spot. Mm-hmm. And then – those teams are now on the bottom. Whoever was counting out and said doesn't even need to show up. Those teams 
What if what, let's say the the number one seed gets shocked in the first round? Dude, this we could see some nice stuff like happens in the NCAA. Uh, we didn't get March Madness this year. Maybe mm-hmm. the NBA could give us a little July Madness. There's, there's going to be some July madness, some August madness going on. Is the thing, especially if your team's not in it, like those eight teams. Like, what do you do in the NCAA tournament when there's, like, not a team you really care about or whatever? Uh, and you're, if you're like me, you're like a lot of people where you just go for the lower seed, you go for the underdog. Exactly. And there's going to be some underdog stories. I, I think this th- these people have been training their asses off because they wanted to come back to basketball. Also, what else you got to do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And – They've given some of these – they've given guys outs. Like, we've seen a couple of players say that they don't want to come. Mm-hmm. So, you know, everyone who's showing up wants to be here right now. 